Hello world, welcome to the Sunday Funday edition of Camp Aspinall. On today's episode, we are talking to our new content creator, host of the Hack the Class video podcast series, launching very soon. Thank you so much for clicking on this video and giving us 10 minutes of your time. Let's go. Recording in progress. Here we go. Hello, everybody. We are joined today with none other than Laura Williams. Laura, how are you on a Sunday, August 11th? Hey, everybody. Um, I'm doing well. I just taught a class. I'm a little tired, but I'm ready to roll. So I, I texted Laura. I'm talking to two cameras. For those of you watching on Zoom and those of you watching on the YouTube on Zoom, I said, Laura, we have to do an intro since you're going to come on as a content creator on the channel. And she said, I'm teaching. And I went, hold on a second. Number one, it's Saturday. Number two, it's August. So what are you doing? Ah, uh, just working my love, man. Like doing uh, agile classrooms training. So prepping some teachers for the next year to do some awesome in the classroom. So is it like a, a weekend workshop for educators to come level up their own learning with you? Oh yeah. And honestly, I love it because like people, it's not like required. It's people who want to do it opt in. So I get like, I get the innovators. I get the like the creators, the, the STEM folk. I don't know the people that really want to like level up learning for kids. So I really enjoy it. It. So it's a side hustle, like to make a little extra money. I love it because I get to work with some of the best people. So and all around the globe, like we had someone that was in Dubai. Like how really? cool is that? Yeah. Oh, wow. Over there. Yeah. So you're doing it virtual too, hybrid? Yep. Um, we use digital whiteboarding and Zoom and um, it actually creates a pretty cool learning environment, like to be interactive and share and collaborate, which is exactly what we're trying to model. So it's not a sit and get. Uh, I practice what we preach. So 21st century skills are um, our bread and butter. That's amazing. So you're a mom, you're an author, you're a teacher. What don't you do? Have you got a couple um, of game handy, by the way? <laughs> yes, I do. And I made sure to match it. Look at that. <laughs> I think that's probably it's one pretty. of the most beautiful covers we've done, honestly. Definitely at that size. Yeah. And it's like, I don't know. It just feels really like you need this. It's an accessory, to be honest. Like post it notes. I don't know. It just it feels good. You? An extension of me. Extension yeah. Of actually, you. even I'm like literally like I'm feeling oh this my. vibe. I don't know if you can tell that. Like I have a problem, but we'll see. <laughs> We're gonna have to do a hack the class rebrand because everything's black in my world. So we're adding some color. We'll add some color to the <laughs> hack the class stuff. Yeah. So for those of you that are new to the YouTube space or at least new to this channel, you just happen to click on this video and maybe you came over from X. We're starting a video podcast, aren't we? Yes, we are. Your show. Yeah, it's my show, guys. Come to the come on over. Have a so seat. We're, gonna, we're, we're doing a we're doing a <laughs> we're doing a hack the class video podcast here in the, tw in the 21st century, coming past the Zoom. The C word era is long behind us now. I'm really excited for where this can go. What can some of our viewers expect to see? First of all, what the heck are we even doing? I'll pass it over to you. Well, first off, people find voices of educators that are doing awesome, and we are going to shine a light on their awesome work. So it's going to show value in what we do, and it's going to spread ideas so that we can do better for our kids. Here's a fun fact for you, because you want to know, and I'm full of them. I started my YouTube channel in 2006 when I was 25 years old in university, and I was just about ready to go to teacher's college, but I thought, I'm a coder, self-taught coder in high school. There's something here. I can make it on YouTube. The problem was I come from a very small town, much like yourself, and we only had dial-up internet until, honestly, until like 2019, 2020. We had the Sky Internet, the Elon one, that worked okay. But it always made me think about assigning homework because I had that barrier, that hurdle, if you will. I only had dial-up internet as a student, right? So when I went into computer science and then I ended up in education, we talk about using technology in our classroom and assigning these things for homework. Equity has always been something that has stuck with me, especially as a straight white male. But that story, you know, dial up internet and me not being able to create content until I'm well into my 40s trying to relive that dream now. Yeah, well, you're doing awesome. Like, oh, come you. on, drone. Like you drone, like your drone footage. If you haven't seen that, guys, go look, look at that. Like you can make, I want you to come to rural Iowa and I want you to shine a light on some of like, you know, it can be pretty in its own right. Like cornfields can be pretty, right? An ocean. I don't know. I don't know. Matt, I would say drone magic right there. Drone magic. It's a gift. Drone magic. Oh yeah, it's a gift. It's a gift. So we're going to do this Hack the Class video podcast series. And we're going to interview some like-minded teachers, I think, like ourselves. Isn't that the plan? Yeah. And if you're watching this right now, holler at us because we want to hear your story. And we want to get it out there in front of the masses. It's true. We don't know what we don't know. We don't know what we don't know. And I think that's part of it. Like, I think it's accepting that, like, hey, I don't know everything. 
and somebody might be out there doing it better. And what can I glean from that? So like coming into this with the mindset of like, I want to learn and we're lifelong learners, I think is going to be pivotal for sort of like creating this hack the class movement in my mind anyways. Yes. So we're thinking the same things and we didn't get on this call ahead of time. If that's what you're thinking, this no. is up unscripted because that's how we roll <laughs> that's right you're in grad school yes i am Soon lifelong to, learning dr laura williams 2026 i hope that's right. what you call me that, <laughs> i'll call you many things between now and then no <laughs> oh no that is exciting how's that journey going for you it's true teachers um, don't stop learning we hear you are teaching all summer learning all summer still taking courses for those of you that don't know getting a phd is like taking out a second mortgage oh yeah i'm like in debt and actually i've been in debt like because i just keep going back i don't know if i'm like a glutton for punishment but um, I definitely have my my financial aid kind of racking up, but I think it's worth it in the long run. Um, I want to learn more. And part of it is for me in education to go back into school, learning education things, I think it's about wanting to serve better. So I'm actually in leadership classes. I want to understand the role of the leader and how I can support them so that ultimately change happens at the classroom. Like I love administration. I think it's really important, but the real work is in the classroom with the kids, but the leader is going to be that impediment crusher to remove barriers for teachers so that they can remove barriers for kids. And so that's kind of where I'm at. Like, I want to learn more about that to get in there deeply and like help craft the, you know, the future. That if is you will. a beautiful thing. Now, your husband's an administrator. Is that correct? Yes. So he is a uh, principal in a rural Iowa uh, school district. But you all live it. You live and breathe it like we do over here too. It just, it never turns off, does it? It's just 24 seven. No, cool. when you're passionate about it, you don't turn your passion off. Like I just, you just can't. So you're always constantly tweaking and like, what could I do better? What could I learn more? Education is one of those things that's like never done. Like we're not just done. <laughs> People aren't done. Growth isn't done. Fox. So yeah, it's not, it's not like that. It's a, it's, in my mind, again, like the improvement game, it's about improving. Um, it's about improving and leveling up and like, what what next? Like, how can we feed our passions? How can we find our purpose and keep contributing to that vision? I love that. See, I'm not a connected, I'm not connected to a school district any further. I'm not connected to higher ed anymore as of last semester. And so this is, it's a bit of an identity crisis for myself. So I've really taken a YouTube to at least share my learning thoughts on a regular basis. So I still feel like I'm engaging with teacher community and with folks like you, oh, yeah. but it just, it clicked this summer that, you know, in 2024, I don't know that I need to be affiliated with anything to be an educator. I still pay my, my certification. I'm still qualified. You know, I still carry all those things. Just kind of a self-employed go rogue, sort of a fly by the seat of your pants, blaze a trail for everybody, kind of an educator, much like yourself. But that's, that's risk taking. Like, I think that's something you have to model and, and one thing I would advocate in like your, in your path, Brian, is that you are authentically learning and you're showing us like what's going well in that journey. You're, you're, you're being totally candid about like what did not go well. Uh, one of the episodes, like, gosh, I'm like, am I watching like technical math just play out right in front of me? <laughs> like, like, I think that you're showing a landscape of learning in a different way. And I think schools are moving that direction. I'm seeing more and more um, kids getting math credit in a building and trades class. Like how can we, you know, why are we just saying this is just for CTE kids and why are we not giving them credit? You know, what if they're doing those things and they're developing those skills and they're learning that like standard or content or what benchmark, whatever you want to call it, why not? Mm -hmm. And so I don't know. I think that, I think we need more of that. I think we meet, I think we need more non-tradition to sort of break the the mold so that we can better support kids right where they're at on their personal trajectories. I couldn't agree anymore. <laughs> the catch now is how do we monetize this so we can continue said movement, right? Otherwise, we just keep yeah. accruing debt, as you know. Tuition's not not cheap. Oh. So it's been an interesting oh, yeah. learning path. And I think this is where we really need to leverage the intersection of the parent group. We look at all stakeholders in education and the parent group and the corporate world are there. The parent group's always been there and they're required. The corporate world we've, you know, let in, given a lot of control to, but now we need to sort of like leverage corporate money, corporate technology to do what educators like us, all educators, so to speak, want to do outside the 
physical confines that have been in place that might even be a physical building. They've been there forever, right? So I think it's an interesting time. And I think we're just on the cusp of what's to come on the trail of that C word thing that happened four years ago already. I think we're now finally seeing the light out of the end of hopefully at the end of that tunnel too. Oh yeah. It really shook the rug, like the proverbial rug of what's right about education and what's wrong with education. We saw those pain points, especially mm -hmm. with that C word. Yeah. <laughs> at the time I was teaching university tech courses and in, in 2020, my enrollment went through the roof. And I, at the time you got paid per student and I was teaching teachers. So my enrollment went through, my consulting went in the tubes, but my, my enrollment mm -hmm. went up in 2021 yep. enrollment tanked. The university was canceling oh. my courses. So we went, we're all going to take tech. It's remote learning to one year later. We were like, I hate it. I'm done. Get it out of my face. In one year. <laughs> that is so so what's next for Laura Williams? Besides being a exquisite host, I hope I'm, by the way, disclaimer, I'm new. Like I've never hosted a podcast. So That's why we do well, this. not true. I've, I've hosted some webinars and we've dabbled. Like I'm not, <laughs> I'm not uh, totally a newbie when it comes to like video conferencing and chatting and like learning and teaching and things like that. But I really hope that I can learn and grow and, and do it justice, the work that people are doing. If I can help facilitate that conversation, get really real with people. Um, it's awkward being on here. It's totally is. awkward. So like if we make a really cool conversation uh, with two people that could be at any place on this globe, having a conversation about their passions, then I will have, I think I will have done it justice. So that is my hope. Beyond that, it's a new school year. So I am of service to Iowa educators and I'm excited to see what that looks like. I'm in school, like you said, so I'll be doing my learning after hours. I have night classes. So that's kind of, again, glutton for punishment. Luckily, I have a great family that's supporting me to do that. I have great peers and colleagues and um, building a network of awesome change agents to keep me going. So uh, the that's networking what right there. Before. Network mm -hmm. of change agents. Maybe that's the name of season two. Network of, network I like of that. That's got a ring to it. Dot com. Yeah. Everybody out there right now com. registering that on GoDaddy. Hashtag dot com. If I'm buying the domain. <laughs> Well, you Very have cool. a gift to bring out the best in everybody with your energy, and I feel it on this call. So I have no doubt whatever you, whatever endeavor you take on is just going to be absolutely amazing. Your learning journey is incredibly inspiring. We're almost similar in age. We're very close in age. You're still a student. I finished grad school not too long ago, and uh, I think that's just what makes us click, and we can pick up a conversation every three months just like we were and keep going, keep changing, and keep chasing great Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got this. If you could have one superpower, what would it be and why? Oh, no. That's a that's a tough question. Let me think of this. Don't worry. You know, we'll and, up and, the I'm like, like, initially, like, I want to fly. Like, who doesn't want to be able to just fly? To Canada? You got connections. To Canada. To obvi obviously, Canada, Canada, I would want to go see. Um, oh, fly. one super. I mean, I, wanna, I, want, I want to level the playing field for people. I, I don't know. Like, on one hand, I have this duty to be of service. So, like, could my superpower help with that? But then on a selfish thing, like, I want to see the world, too. Like, I want to know. And so <laughs> flying would be really cool. So, so um, what I'm hearing is we have to figure out how to monetize Hack the Class so that you're compensated to go do PD and consulting in schools all over the world to do better for kids. Is that what you're saying? Sure. Good. That so good Microsoft Camp that's watching. <laughs> Hello. Well, Laura, thank I you so, so much for your time. Thank you so much for being on here. Thank you so much for joining the group, for being on the YouTube channel, for chasing greatness with us. And we look forward to having you on a regular schedule coming in the fall. I guess. We'll see you then. End of a Sunday. Y'all are beautiful. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. Give somebody close to you a hug, peace and love, all the other things. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, leave us a comment down below. See you tomorrow!